This time in a brand new series of The Gadget Show. It's billboards, baguettes and brainstorms as Susie and I become high-tech ad men using the latest cutting-edge gadgetry to sell brand Gadget Show to the world in what is probably our most ambitious challenge ever. Also in the show, John teams up with Radio 1's Comedy Dave to find out if the new iPhone 4 really is the Poodle's privates. I'm really quite impressed. And welcome to The Gadget Show. A brand spanking new series of The Gadget oh, Show. I love it. We're here <laughs> until Christmas. Yeah, cool yeah. That? And we can guarantee you the usual fare of Gadget Show goodness, including Susie, no doubt, in at some point in a cat suit. Yep. Or possibly in casualty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. I look forward to the second part of that. And you undoubtedly will find some non-excuse to take off all of your clothes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and love. you'll be scared of your own shadow at some point. <laughs> yeah, that's not as funny. All right, fair enough. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> and at some point, they'll probably be a new presenter joining oh, us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. On that revelation, let's move on to this week's challenge, the first challenge Wait. of the first show. Hang of the on series. A, a set. What's, what's, in the, what's with the golden gold envelope? envelope? Oh, yes. this golden envelope? Mm. Yeah. Oh, nothing much. Just uh, the winner of this week's challenge. Well, let's say it then. Well, no. I'll open it up then. What about sharing the experience well, without you? Well, save the show. Just find it. What no. about that? No. I want to know the winner. No! <laughs> no! OK, then, let's move on indeed to this week's challenge, which was a little beauty. Yes, indeed it was. And it featured uh, these two old-timers, you know, the, old. the old guard of the gadget show, <laughs> doing something that they both know a lot about. Pitching, promotion and publicity. Why not? Hmm? Right, Susie, get the envelope and I'll get Wait. the envelope. Oh, oh, Wait a second! Oh. That's not the envelope! No, but it's nice. Susie and I were told to meet in Piccadilly Circus to await details of our challenge. Oh, great to be in London, isn't it? Piccadilly Circus. I love it. What do you reckon? Challenge on the side of a building? Yeah, I think you're probably right. Maybe on one of those big TV screens, Sue. What do you reckon? That's a good show. Yeah? Hang on a minute. What? Is that a, is that a golf sale or is that our logo? <laughs> oh, oh, high tech. <laughs> Your challenge is to advertise the gadget show using the latest and cutting edge tech. You've each got to come up with an ad campaign, ooh, for the show and get that campaign live around the country using the latest in advertising gadget. The only rule, no television, no radio. Blimey, yeah. may the best campaign win. Oh we're going to be like Sarchi and Sarchi. <gasps> we're all like itchy and scratchy. <laughs> The past 10 years has seen a revolution in advertising. It's no longer a matter of just sticking a picture up by the side of the road or putting an ad on the telly. These days, it's all about moving LED and LCD screens, projections, interaction and window displays in bus stops. We both quickly got busy researching the latest advertising tech and there was a lot out there. It was clear that the ad world takes its tech seriously. But it didn't take me long to devise my winning plan of action. Regular viewers of The Gadget Show will remember this, Extreme Caterpillar Breakdance. It was a viral video that I did in a challenge against Susie several years ago, and it was huge. It went all over the world, and, and to date has been watched almost seven million times. What I'm trying to do with my viral challenge this time around is, is just try and get something of that success behind whatever it is that I decide to film and put on the internet. I knew Jason was going to go down the viral route. I mean, he practically lives on the internet after all. So I chose to go the more conventional route of billboards and bus stops whilst trying to pack in as much tech as possible. Uh, here we go. This is what I'm looking for. On the JC Deco website, they've got incredible advertising stuff. 3D, augmented reality, interactive touchscreen bus stops. This, this is right up my street. Fantastic. Having decided to make a viral video, all that was left now was the small problem of what to put in it. In order for it to be successful, it's got to have amazing content. So, I'm going to use architectural video mapping. I first witnessed architectural video mapping at this year's Gadget Show Live, and quite frankly, it blew me away. This was exactly what I needed to win. I wanted to create an event where people could experience the brilliance that is video mapping, film it and then see it online for the world to see. Over at JC Deco's offices, I was blown away by the types of advertising gadgets they had on offer. They've made their ads interactive. Bus stops have touchscreens, dispensers and even face recognition. 
technology has come on a long, long way in the last 10 years. We've got interactive screens, we've got augmented reality, we've got all kinds of things that people can interact with and take away. When I used to wait for a bus, it was boring, and now I want to go on a bus again. Pod and Bruce were the creative team behind the projection mapping at Gadget Show Live, and they explained exactly how this cutting-edge technology works. Well, you're taking the building and you're kind of merging it with a digital version of itself. So then you can create uh, illusions on the building, make it do things that it wouldn't naturally do. So what buildings have we got and what can we do with them? Well, we need to pick something that's iconic, also something that we can project onto. So Big Ben we like. Big Ben, there's Constitution Arch and Marble Arch. Oh, Marble Arch. Oh, Marble Arch is good, yeah. It's a nice you know, white kind of building as well, which always helps. Fantastic. So we can, we can really play with the architecture on that one, it's quite interesting. Kind of blur the lines of reality and fiction so people aren't sure what's real and what's mm. not. Is that really happening on the building? And then it came to me. Because it's a space invader. It's a space invader. What a great idea. Isn't it? There is the classic 8-bit space invader character there. Look at that. There is Marble Arch, all right? And there is the space invader. Yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. Really. sounds good. Yeah. For my campaign, I would be using LED billboards, Bluetooth messages and interactive bus shelters. But I wanted to take it to the next level and use augmented reality to create a virtual me. How techy can we go here? What we can do is we can film you in front of a green screen yeah. and I can take that film and put you on a, a card. If you just hold that up to the camera, which is here, oh. and you can see Darth. Look at that. The plan was that cards like this with a picture of me on the front would be dispensed from special augmented reality bus stops around Manchester. Look at that, that's amazing. When held in front of a camera at the bus stop, a 3D image of me would seemingly appear on the card. Literally taking a piece of the gadget show home and the presenter in the palm of your hand. So we built a 25 foot tall retro 8-bit space invader out of Marble Arch. <laughs> baguette, anyone? <laughs> I think we've earned ourselves a baguette. Oh. Yeah, that's how excited is that? I tell you what, I am really excited about what AR has to offer. Really am. And you guys, what are you planning for well, us? Well, you know, AR? the thing about AR is that it is literally kind of poking its nose into absolutely everything at yeah. the moment. It's yeah. amazing. I mean, for example, kids' books. Have a look at this book, Dragonology. All uh -huh. I have to do is open up the page and just show the dragon to the webcam. And the little dragon, there he is. Oh, wow. wow. A combination of AR and your imagination. Yeah. Brilliant for so many different Isn't things. It? And, yeah. and think about that in a gaming context. <laughs> uh, so, loads of stuff still to come. And also, part two. Yes. You've got to watch that. It's yeah. amazing. Don't miss it. Welcome back. Now, I want to talk to you about the eagerly awaited iPhone 4. Apple lovers will tell you that the iPhone 4 is truly a game changer. Apple knockers will tell you that it's another load of shiny, shiny, cleverly marketed nonsense. So, what's the truth? Should you get one, or should you avoid it like the plague? Well, to find out, I set out to do some hands-on testing and enlisted the help of a self-confessed iPhone lover. That iPhone lover was Comedy Dave, the co-host of Radio 1's award-winning Chris Moyle's Breakfast Show. Dave, how are you? We met up outside Apple's flagship store in London, just after the launch of the iPhone 4, and it became clear that owning its predecessor, the 3GS, had had a profound effect on Dave. Well, I'm firmly in the iPhone camp now. Really, everybody said to me, they said, if you get an iPhone, it will completely change the way you think, and you'll never be able to live without it. And I now can't imagine ever having a normal phone again, as it were. I, I use it for everything. Dave was really excited to see the new iPhone. Wow, so this is it. It looks very nice. But would he think that its better camera, upgraded operating software and new design had improved on his 3GS enough to cement its position as king of smartphones and get his seal of approval? What we're going to do is pitch that iPhone 4 you're holding yep. against some of its rivals in a series of head-to-head -head challenges I've devised. John, I'm ready for the challenge. First up was usability, and I'd be taking on Dave with the HTC Desire, one of the most user-friendly and versatile rivals to the iPhone 4. Here's the challenge. What we've got to do is use the internet on our phones to find out an unusual fact about mm -hmm. each other, and the winner is going to be the first person to post it on Twitter. You're on. Ready, mm. steady, go. Yep. We both hit the internet button on our phone's homepages, then began to search for one another. 
I only know you as Comedy Dave. What's your full name? Proper spelling. I couldn't tell you that, John. Dave's iPhone is the quickest to date, thanks to its speedy A4 processor, the same one used in the iPad. Plus, your visual experience is enhanced by a 960 by 640 resolution screen. It says here that you went to Oxford. In fact, you went to Oriel College. Oxford. Yes. Is that tweet worthy? Uh, well, I, I suppose so. I went to college in Warrington, which isn't really worthy of anything. My desires on the screen keyboard were slightly less responsive, but soon I had my fact on Dave. You were born in Hong Kong. This is very true. Made in Hong Kong, <laughs> as I used to joke that it said on my bum. The race was now on to post our facts to Twitter. And as the iPhone's new iOS 4 operating software allows multitasking, Dave double-tapped the home button to find his Twitter app in no time. Hi, Mr. Bentley. I'm nearly oh. there. Sadly, it took me slightly longer to access Twitter through the Desire's built-in messaging service, Friendstream, enabling Dave to snatch victory. And <laughs> send. So the iPhone 4 had triumphed in the ease of use stakes. But how would it fare in a test of photo and video quality? To find out, I took Dave to the colourful surroundings of London Zoo. So, John, the ball is firmly in your court. What are you going to put up against my 5-megapixel iPhone camera? Well, I've got the new Motorola Milestone XT720. It's got right. an 8-megapixel camera. Okay. It's 720p HD video, and it's got a Xenon flash. So, on paper, at least, I'm pretty confident. We began by taking some photos of the zoo's residents and were soon up close and personal with some meerkats. So it is quite literally feeding mm. time at the zoo. Whereas the 3GS's camera had three megapixels, the iPhone 4's boasts five megapixels, and Dave soon noticed the difference. I'm really quite impressed, and, and this is one area where I think they've made a big, mm. big difference. Thanks to its minimal shutter delay and tap-to-focus feature, Dave was grabbing some great quality snaps. You see, this is the type of phone that I would imagine David Attenborough might have. I, on the other hand, had some serious issues. Oh, come on. That's a real disappointment, this, the slowness of this. Plus, the colour and clarity of the resultant pictures left a lot to be desired. And it was a similar story for the video. While both phones record clips in 720p HD, Dave's iPhone captured some much smoother, crisper and more colourful monkey action than my rather disappointing milestone. So, Dave's iPhone 4 had won two out of two so far, but we still had one more test. Before the iPhone 4 was released, people went mad for the 3GS as it was easily the most stylish phone around, thanks to its sleek black plastic coating, smooth moulded back and rounded edges. Whereas this new iPhone 4, basically it's exactly the same, but it's got sharper edges, it's less it's comfortable not, to hold. It's John, look. It's narrower, it looks better, it's sexier. Well, I think we should let the good people of Soho decide. We've got 30 minutes and whoever gets the most votes wins. You're on. This lady here. Which one of these two phones do you prefer? Mm. This one, because it's yeah. smaller. You like that one because it's smaller? That one, because it's nice and flat. Initially, our fashion-conscious crowd plumped for the iPhone 4 on account of its lighter and thinner design. Uh, the new one, definitely. That one, the new one. But the familiar smooth ergonomics of the 3GS soon swung the votes in my favour. This feels smoother and better. I prefer the curves, to be honest. I think this is better. Oh, to touch and feel, this feels nicer. Feels like a lady. It's nice, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> That's more sensible. more like a man. <laughs> <laughs> and after 30 minutes, I'd won, claiming two-thirds of all the votes. Well, I think that's a definite win for the old one, a victory for curves. And I'm surprised, John, because I thought most people would have embraced the new iPhone 4 style, but a lot of fans of the old classic shape. So, if you'd like to know an awful lot more about the iPhone 4, simply go to our website at 5.tv forward slash gadget show, where you'll find, well, pretty much all there is to know about Apple's latest wonder phone. There's my in-depth review, the best prices and all the best apps available. Great review, John. As incisive as always. Thank you very much. Uh, but I've got to say that, strangely for me, I'm not adopting the iPhone 4 just ah. yet because I'm not a fan of its shape, you know. I, I much prefer the, the sort of asymmetric curve of the 3GS and the 3G. So you're really echoing the people that we met in the street in London, that same view, really? Pretty much, mm. yeah. But it is still the best smartphone in the world, I think, albeit one with a couple of issues. There is that issue that if you hold it in a certain way, your reception suffers. And it also seems to have problems with its proximity sensor. And when you hold it up to your ear, you can find yourself sort of muting a call unintentionally with your ear, which clearly isn't good enough. No, it's not. It's not. But, um, well, Apple have clearly got to resolve those issues mm. before we can give it 5Gs yep. on the gadget show. But I tell you one thing it is really good at. Check this ah. out. 
it's going to control this thing, the mm. AR drone, which we've, we've talked about in development, but now it's finally here. Look at this, I'm controlling it using mm. the accelerometers on the phone. Yep. You can use it with an iPhone, iPod Touch, and you'll love this. If I take my hands off it, look, it automatically stabilizes, and That's I love that, good. because it, it means that crash you don't have to be an expert to take fly. all your hands off. Now, it's got a camera, crucially, yeah. so you can actually see where you're going. Yeah, so the image from the camera, as you can see, yeah. is streamed real-time to your screen, yeah. but it gets much better than that. It's called the AR drone, because AR stands for augmented reality. And if you're good at coding, you can make your own virtual games with the thing. So you yeah. can have rings in the sky, you can have flags on a racetrack, and you An can race the thing around it. Whatever, yeah. Yeah. Of course, none of it would exist physically. It would all be superimposed onto the video feed yeah. on his. Mm. It's futuristic, isn't it? It is, indeed. Right, let's get back to this week's challenge, in which Jason and I were set the not inconsiderable task of implementing and executing an ad campaign to promote the gadget show. Yeah, the rules were quite strict. We weren't allowed a TV advert, we weren't allowed to use radio for advertising, but we could use pretty much everything else available to us. But importantly, we weren't just going to be judged on the success mm. of our campaigns, how many people responded to it, but also the technology. Yeah, I decided to go down quite a traditional route, using poster advertising in magazines, but with a high tech twist using augmented reality. Cool, whereas I decided to go down the viral route. Uh, so I, I knew I had to create an event that was in itself interesting, so that if it was filmed, put on the internet, people would want to pass it on to their friends. So we're both armed with our ideas. All we had to do now was go and implement them. After a busy day of so successful meetings with our respective oh, advertising pros, we were both armed with ideas and well up for the challenge. Excellent, I love that idea. I decided to use 3D video mapping and project onto Marble Arch at night. Then I'd film it and get it online as a viral ad. I headed straight there to meet my projection mapping experts, Pod and Bruce, to map the building. How does the process go from this point onwards? We're going to measure the distance. Yeah. Where we're we going to put our projector. Yeah. We're going to take a picture of it, which is going to be exactly from the projector's point of view. Yes. And then I'm going to hand that information over to Bruce. OK, so all you have to make sure of is when you bring the projector on the night, you bring it to the same spot that you yes, measured from. Exactly. And how are you measuring what? Are you pacing it out? How are you doing oh, it? This little gadget oh. here. It's the Golf Laser Rangefinder. OK. This rangefinder works by sending out a low-powered infrared beam to the object you're looking at. It measures the distance by calculating the time it takes the beam to return. And you're measuring to the, not the pillar, but the actual face of Marble Arch. Exactly, yeah. It's 30 metres. Do you want to have a go? Yeah, I'd like to. Can I? Yeah. Press the button. 30 metres exactly. This is it. This is the actual photograph. This is the beginning. That's the one. That's it. For the 3D projection to work, it's essential that this process is done properly so that Bruce's animations will fit Marble Arch perfectly. Yeah, I turn it into a 3D model and then we'll do the animations on that and we'll play it back out through the projector exactly the way that it came in. Fantastic. You're making a suit on your computer based on the real object so when you come back, it fits perfectly. It's tailor-made. I've decided to concentrate my campaign in one area and saturate commuters with the Gadget Show message for one day. And that place was Manchester. Photos of me would be appearing on billboards and bus stops across the city, so I needed to make sure that they were top-notch. And guess what? I've got the perfect outfit. For my photo shoot, we used a Canon EOS 40D camera that shot in really high resolution, so that when the designers blew up the images of me to fit the billboards, the quality wouldn't degrade. Beautiful. OK. Thanks. Pictures done. It was time to film the augmented reality video. Hi, it's me, Susie Perry off the telly. And look where I am, right in the palm of your hand. Filming this in front of the green screen meant it would be easy for the augmented reality creators to cut me out and make me magically appear on a little tiny advert for the show. I was on my way to Bruce in the dark room to see how he was getting on with the design for the projection. Well, show me what you've got, man. I can't wait to see. I've got some space invaders yes. for you. I'm just exploding them, so we're going to have gunfire at them and they're going to explode. I thought I'd put a little score behind them there as well. Look, I mean, look yeah. at that. How vivid is it's that? Really, it's really punchy. It's beautiful. It works really well, doesn't it? We'll see on the night. Dude, we will see on the night. I can't wait to see the finished article. I was thrilled. I just knew this viral would be a success and spread the gadget show word around the world. At JC Deco, my campaign was really coming to life. 
Their creative team were busy putting together all of the elements for my day in Manchester. Phone box covers, bus stops and billboards. These were then sent off to the printers, where the first thing they did was print a 19-foot version of me. At the same time, the augmented reality Susie was being put together by the boys at Hidden. When the software sees the augmented reality advert for the first time, it assigns a digital footprint to it. This acts as a trigger, so whenever the software sees the ad again, the augmented reality Susie experience begins. Bruce was doing an amazing job on the design of the projection, but now it was time for me to do my bit and get the word out. In order for this to be a success, I needed the public behind me. And so I started tweeting about the marble art spectacle we were creating using the hashtag GadgetVader. We've got a great film, we've got a venue, midnight, the date has been set. Marble Arch just metres away from me. It's very, very exciting, but it won't amount to anything unless people come to the event, watch it. We then film their reactions and the, the spectacle itself and then get that out onto the internet and keep that excitement going. It wasn't long before it was picked up by some of my followers and interest soon began to grow. One of my fans even created a Facebook page for the event. Just as everything was being finalised, I got a call that made my day. Thank you, bye. My campaign has just gone national. T3 said they would run my augmented reality advert in their August edition. That's just so cool. And I can put it on the website as well. Whoa! Oh, top stuff. How about wow. that? And I've got to say that um, a 19-foot leather-clad Susie Perry would make me watch anything. Oh. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet. <laughs> but would it be enough for me to win the challenge? Or would Jason's rather impressive retro space invader shoot me down in flames? Yes, whose campaign will be judged to have been the best? Please. Yeah, you, can, you can tell us now. You've been wafting that round all day. Yeah. You know, yeah, I could tell you now. I could tell you, I could tell you, and I could tell you, but I'm not going to. You're going to have to wait just a little bit longer. In fact, till the other side of these ads before I reveal the winner. Come on. Welcome back. Well, the ad break may well be over, but in many ways, it's only just begun. <laughs> You'll remember that this week's challenge for Jason and Susie was to use the best tech they could to come up with a winning campaign for this, The Gadget Show. Yeah, I put a high-tech spin on conventional techniques by making billboards and magazine ads highly interactive. Whereas I went viral and using guerrilla techniques, I redecorated, in a virtual sense, uh, one of London's <laughs> most famous landmarks. It has truly been one of the most hotly contested gadget show challenges I have ever yeah, borne yeah. witness to. <laughs> the two of these have a desire to win that is palpable. I can feel it coming off them like some kind of interactive aura. It is a bit whiffy in here, isn't it? And I hold in my hands the golden envelope with <gasps> the name of the winner embossed on a little bit of card. Neither of these two know who has won. I could put them both out of their misery by Please revealing Reveal. the name of the winner. Reveal! Come on. But first to the judges. Oh, oh come off it! Get it out, Otis. A Wednesday night, 22.40, the gadget show's covert night ops had begun. We were taking over one of London's most iconic landmarks, Marble Arch, projecting a video onto it, turning it into a viral and spreading the word of the gadget show across the internet. Showtime was fast approaching. The crowds were gathering. I checked in with Pod to see how we were doing. What we're doing is we're using two projectors yep. with extra brightness. So right. Andy here, who's our projectionist, is just lining the two projectors up. Hopefully really? in the next five or ten minutes he'll be done and then we'll be ready to go. Oh, man! This is so cool. The generator at the back of the van was powering this whole operation. Pod was running everything through an HD media server, which was connected to two DLP projectors with 20,000 lumens each. They would project in glorious high def, and along with my 150 watt sound system, there was no doubt it would impress. Whilst the team carried out the final tweaks, I took the opportunity to chat to the gathering crowd. How did you hear about it? Was it on Twitter? Or was it Twitter? It was clear that my Gadget Vader hashtag had caught the attention of lots of tweeters. I was amazed at how many had turned up to find out what it was all about. It's Wheezy Kid yeah, from Twitter! <laughs> it's, a very in, it's a very strange feeling, in a good way. <laughs> Behave yourself. <laughs> when you meet someone on Twitter, because we're like, we're like proper mates, exactly. aren't we? We go way back! Exactly, And yet we've, back. we've never met. No. It's brilliant! How the internet for you. 
Amongst them was our judge, Nicole Yershon, director of innovative solutions at Ogilvy & Mather, one of the world's leading advertising and marketing agencies. The anticipation and excitement was building, and soon we were ready to go, which was just as well. I'm getting a little bit nervous because we've had one too many police sirens that I keep worrying are actually going to turn in here. So I think we should get on with it. Jeshin, we should do it. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. You ready? You ready? Yeah. All right. OK, three, two, one, go! Think. Really cute, actually. I particularly liked his head being bounced around. I, I think it, it did a good job. But the projection was just the start. Remember, my plan was to upload a video of the Marble Arch stunt to YouTube and let it spread virally around the country. And after just a day or two, I was getting big results. Well, I can't, I can't tell how excited I am. It's all gone viral. Look, it's all over YouTube. Gadget Vader, Gadget Vader, Gadget Vader, everywhere. Look. And this guy shot it in 3D and it's superb look at it best of all look we made it into the sun look there's me gadget vader not not the clown look me on the left so jason's campaign was enjoying great success spreading around the web making britain's biggest newspaper and impressing our judge could i compete too right i could 5am on a drizzly morning in Manchester. In just a few hours, this junction would be filled with rush hour commuters. My ad campaign was beginning to take shape in the form of four 10-foot billboards. Posters were in place. All that was left was the small matter of getting a 19-foot me and a huge 3D gadget show G up alongside them. A team of specialist sign builders were on hand to ensure that the three pieces of me fitted together perfectly and the G was mounted in the right place. Over in the city centre, another team of signposters have been working through the night to transform Piccadilly Gardens into a tech-filled commuter's playground. It was packed with interactive bus stops and phone boxes, all, of course, covered in Gadget Show branding. It's raining, but never mind that. All ready for my big day promoting the show. Already I can see people interacting with our bus stops and playing games. And look! Balloons! But it wasn't just the free balloons, mouse mats and mints that got the public's attention and probably made them late for work. The interactive games on the side of the bus stops were a big hit too. So this is our gaming zone, our gaming bus stop, if you like. And here you can play either pairs or there's a jigsaw puzzle. Ta da Quick, 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 quick! Good, good, good. <laughs> the pressure's got to you. Then there was our studio-style bus stop, designed using photos of our actual Gadget Show studio. We've got over here the website, so you can see what's going on. And then the back wall is just like the Gadget Show. It's exactly the same. There's my shoes that I made. There's some Gadget Show mugs. There's G's all over the city. Of course, the iconic red seats. And this is my favourite bit. You can choose which presenter looks best in the cat suit. Just press it. That's it. Oh! <laughs> oh, Otis. Yay! I feel like I kind of willed him into that, but you know. So far, so good. The public really seemed to be having a good time with the interactive elements of my campaign. But the icing on the cake was, of course, the cutting-edge augmented reality virtual Susie. You have to hold this card, but 45 degrees, there you go. And then... Hi, it's me, Tim Perry. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, it's great, isn't it? That's awesome. Hi, it's me, Tim Perry. 
We know loads of people have downloaded this from the T3 magazine and also on the Gadget Show website, but we thought we'd incorporate it into bus stops in Manchester so people like John, John can have a little play. There you go. Brilliant. Thank you very much. But it wasn't just the bus riders we were targeting. I had some tech over at the main city station, especially for those train passengers. I'm standing on a gadget show vinyl floor mat in the middle of Manchester Piccadilly station because if you switch on your Bluetooth phone while standing on the mat, you get a little message transferred from there to your phone telling you all about the gadget show. While the pedestrians kept themselves entertained in Piccadilly Gardens, on the outskirts of town, the 19-foot Susie was towering over passing traffic. I was certainly turning a few heads. Four billboards of gadgety goodness, right on one of the main thoroughfares in and out of Manchester, Ashton Old Road. Nobody's going to be able to miss the 19-foot Susie. And some good technology too, a 2D me and a 3DG with LED halo technology around the edge. Strike a pose. I was thrilled with the response to my campaign, but what would our judge Nicole think? She had a good look around all three of the main sites that we'd occupied in the city, while I kept everything crossed. I'm so impressed. It's all kind of compacted into a little area where people, I think, feel quite comfortable interacting because they're watching other people do it, so therefore they don't feel so conscious. It must be pulling in tons of data in terms of how many people are interacting. So uh, yeah, it's just really engaging. So I clearly impressed the judge, but had I done enough to beat Jason? Oh. Okay, all right, so we've done the judging, yeah? Yep. Uh, the decision has been made, right? Yep. You just open the envelope. <laughs> In my hand, oh, God. I hold a golden envelope within which, printed on a piece of Gadget Show brand just card... Just read it, man. ..is the name that Ogilvy's own Nicole Yoshin judged to have created the oh, best campaign. Oh, let us campaign. know already! Come on! I have opened the envelope. I love this control. I'm losing my voice in excitement. I'm so excited. The winner is... Yes. Susie Pye! Congratulations! Yes. After all that lovely <laughs> Oh, my oh, Lord. fantastic. Thank you well very done, much. Susie. Thank you. Superb campaign. Br no, brilliant. Genius. Well, loved it, Gadget Vader. Fantastic. But I must say, I'm so excited about that. You can still get involved. If you yes. want to see Reality Susie, all you have to do, right, is go to our website, 5.tv slash gadget. So, and then you have to print off this little advert here in colour. You follow the instructions that are on the website, clearly there for you. Oh, Susie Perry. There you go. And before you know it, you can have me sitting in the palm of your hand. It is oh. so impressive, isn't, isn't it? it? It's brilliant. It's so cool. I mean, literally, if you showed that, you know, even to your, your mum and dad, let alone your, your grandparents, they'd think that you were looking at something from Star Wars. Yeah. You know, it is amazing <gasps> technology. Yeah, because I always wanted to be a princess lady. <laughs> you've made it, girl. Oh. You've got that. <laughs> Augmented reality. Anyway, Way to go. on that fantastic note, that ends the first show in a fantastic new series, and we can't wait to see you next time.